London Newspaper Limited, Governor Okoa, I present to you the Man of the Year Award for 2017. Congratulations. The chairman of today's occasion, who has just presented the award to me, Your Excellency, the Deputy Senate President, and Your Excellencies, governors of various states, both current and former, who are here represented, the Imperial Majesty, the Oni of Ife, the Brig Builder, of our nation, all other awardees, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. I want to thank God for this award and to appreciate the publisher and the management team of Independent Newspapers Limited for this honor done me. When you work in a state such as Delta and you get recognized, it means that God has truly been gracious to you. And I'm one very lucky governor because I've tried to look through the states of this nation starting from 1999 to date. It appears that I'm the only governor who has the full support of my predecessors. Starting from Governor James Sibori, who is our leader and who brought us up to my immediate, that the immediate past governor who became my boss when I became secretary to the state government under him before going to the Senate. And I count myself lucky because when you have these two persons around you, there is a lot that you can learn. And that opportunity has been placed at my disposal. I have grabbed it. And because of that, the very difficult Delta state, a state that would have been so difficult to govern, we are able to carry out the affairs of governance in such a manner that today, though we speak in several tongues, we are one united Delta. That is the source of our strength. That is the source of the peace that has returned fully to us in Delta State. And by the special grace of God, the diversity that we have in terms of our environment and in terms of the various cultural backgrounds that we have has become a source of strength rather than a source of division. There is no doubt that my predecessors did a lot in infrastructure development. We are consolidating on that, and it is tough, truly, building infrastructure, especially in the creeks of the Delta. And we're doing the best that we can. But very importantly, and this impacts on Nigeria as a whole, is that all governments must begin to pay very special attention to our youths. And I thank God that several people have spoken about it. We must find ways to make them wealth creators, not just imparting on their life in the way that we do today, where people go through the secondary school and when they come out, they are carrying pieces of papers in certificates looking for jobs. That wouldn't help. I believe that we need to return to the acquisition of skills we need to begin to strengthen technical education, and the polytechnic education must impart the right knowledge to our Nigerian youths, not what we're doing at the moment. And until we start to do that, we may truly not become the great country that we seek to be. And secondly, 
There is something in this country that nobody wants to care about, the population explosion. We think that it is a source of strength as a nation, but I believe it is not. It would have been if we are properly skilled and educated with the right set of mind to bring development to our nation. But as of today, the population is growing astronomically and our economy is dwindling. It cannot be right if we continue in that manner. So we must be bold enough to begin to look very strongly in the area of family planning and population control. Until we do that, any form of planning that we are doing as a nation is planning to fail. I have said this several times, but people believe that it is something we must not talk about. We must start to talk about it today. Because the issues of insecurity is born more out of the joblessness of our youths. And as long as we continue to increase in numbers, and our economy cannot cater for those youths, we definitely cannot get out of it. So the right set of planning must start fed from the basic. And that basic is to find a way of controlling our population through family planning. And I think that it is very important. As for the political class, we will continue to disagree. But I believe that we are united in the fact that we must stay together to keep this country strong. The military will not come back anymore. I'm definite about that. But all we need is that no matter what we're doing, as long as democracy is deepened and is right, and elections are conducted in such a way that we can have confidence in that election, it will be well with our democracy. So I thank the chairman for raising the issues concerning the unity of this country. Politicians will always speak in the manner we speak, especially when it's getting close to elections. But the important thing is, once we strengthen the issues concerning elections and democracy, and that is a strong job that the National Assembly needs to look into very closely, working with Mr. President, once we have elections that are credible, it will be well with this country. I appreciate the publisher and the management team of Daily Independent, uh, uh, the Independent Newspapers Limited for this honor on me. I dedicate it to the people of Delta State, but I want to truly and publicly appreciate my predecessors who have made life much easier for me and who have continued to offer me the advice. Chief Jensen Nefe Bori, I thank you so much for laying a foundation, a strong foundation in my political life. Governor Emmanuel Oduan, I thank you so much. Because working with you as Secretary to the State Government, you were Secretary to the State Government, I learned a lot. And that has truly helped me through these very trying times. And by the grace of God, people begin to wonder, despite the economic state that we find ourselves in Delta State, how are we able to cope? It is out of smart planning. And that came from the background through which I grew. Our distinguished senators who have been very supportive and members of the House of Rep, Mr. Speaker, and members of the House of Assembly, I must thank you for your cooperation because I couldn't have done it without you. But for the larger people of Delta State, the women, the youths, and the men, who found me worthy to be their governor, I must thank you all. And I must thank you for your patience. Things have been rough. Things have become better. And it shall only continue to be better in Jesus' name. I thank all our guests, and may God bless you. Thank you, and God bless you.
Recession, but right now, all we see today is progression. Uh,